So now it's time to actually make your self-sealing machine screws. So we'll want to get out our O-rings and our 632 machine screws. These are all a uh, half inch long. For each of the 10 machine screws, we're going to take our O-ring and work it onto the screw until it's flush against the head. And then we'll go ahead and repeat this for the other 9 screws. Now we can grab our screwdriver and start screwing them into these holes on the side of the dome. And there should be 10 of these. And once the screw is set into place by hand, we'll screw it in farther with the screwdriver. And we'll keep going right up until the O-ring is touching the outside of the dome. At that point, we'll want to start paying very close attention to what happens when we screw it in further. We'll want to keep a lookout for what I call the bead. And that's basically just the ring where the rubber O-ring makes direct contact with the acrylic sphere. It should appear a bit darker. Let me focus the camera. Uh, okay, yeah, so you should see it better now. And it's just this area surrounding the screw where the O-ring is like jet black. And when you see that and uh, can confirm that like it surrounds the entire machine screw, then we should be good to move on to the next machine screw. So we'll go ahead and screw in the next one and we'll take a minute to just double check that there is a bead that surrounds the machine screw and we'll just repeat this process for the remaining screws. So we've threaded the machine screws through each of those 10 remaining holes and if we look closely they all look pretty good. We have the bead forming around every single one of the screws. And a quick note on the overall layout is that we have four machine screws on either side of the dome that supply power to the motors. And we also have these two machine screws that connect to your key socket that you'll use to turn the ROV on once it's built. Now we can break out our set of 10 632 nuts. So we're just going to thread them on to each one of these screws hand tight. And once it's on hand tight, we can take out our set of needle nose pliers and tighten it one to maybe two full turns. Be sure that you tightened your screws the correct amount. Check the outside of the dome. If the o-ring has been squished down to about half its original size, you're in really good shape. So repeat the exact same process for the other nine screws. And once you're done, your rear dome assembly should look something like this. So if you've been following from my last video, you might have noticed that I forgot to attach this Ethernet connector. So to do this, I crimp the wires in the usual uh, European way. I know I'm not European, but I wanted this to be uh, setup that works for users around the world. Uh, I'm not going to get too in depth on how you order and how you actually crimp the wires here because there's lots of other videos on YouTube on how to do this. But good news if you did order one of the kits that I sell on Blue Dot ROV, uh, this crimping is already taken care of for you. I actually just completely forgot to do this uh, while I was shooting the video. Uh, but yeah, if you're doing it from scratch with your own domes, then this extra bit may be of interest to you. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to attach the uh, internal wires that actually attach to the uh, machine screws we uh, installed. So thanks for watching so far, and I will see you next time.